searching for coming soon home for sale. It might sound good or even clever. In a warm or hot seller's market, searching for coming soon homes for sale can be more frustrating than trying to search for homes that are already active, but there's another solution to find overlooked homes. In today's hyper-competitive real estate market, prospective home buyers are constantly seeking ways to gain an edge in finding their dream home. One very popular tactic is to search for coming soon homes for sale, hoping to get a jump on the competition. However, in many cases, this strategy may lead to frustration and disappointment for a variety of reasons in addition to fierce competition. Instead, a more strategic approach might involve looking backward, specifically exploring homes that didn't sell six months or more ago through the multiple listing service. The current state of the housing market is characterized by a severe shortage of inventory. This imbalance between supply and demand has created a highly competitive environment where properly priced homes in decent condition often receive multiple offers within days, if not hours of being listed. As a result, home buyers searching for coming soon homes for sale might find themselves facing stiff competition from other eager buyers, ultimately leading to uh, bidding wars and inflated prices. Moreover, the coming soon designation often creates a sense of urgency among buyers, prompting them to make rushed decisions without fully evaluating their options. This can result in buyers settling for properties that may not meet their needs or paying more than they originally intended. Likewise, searching coming soon homes for sale in Google or other search engines is not a catch-all. While most real estate agents that have a coming soon listing will list it in the MLS, which uh, will propagate to all the other online real estate search portals like Zillow and Redfin, but sometimes the property never even makes it into the MLS, and as a result, it never shows up on any searches. For example, we took a listing recently, dropped a sign in the yard, and before we could even get to a computer to enter it into the MLS, and we're only talking about a couple of hours, I had received no less than 30 calls from buyers and agents aggressively scouring the neighborhood for new opportunities. Needless to say, the calls continued for days and multiple offers were received. In the end, a buyer agreed to purchase the home for a much higher price without even asking for any kind of repairs. Lots of other buyers, they were very disappointed. So find homes that failed to sell. A great alternative that most people, most buyers never think of is looking backward through the MLS for homes that didn't sell in the past. We usually look six months or more, uh, and this tactic can provide several advantages to home buyers. First and foremost, these properties are almost always guaranteed to have less competition, if any, compared to coming soon or active listings. Almost all buyers overlook these properties in favor of newer listings, giving savvy home buyers an opportunity to, ne to negotiate with sellers who may be more motivated to make a deal. But why are failed sales overlooked? Properties that failed to sell in the past are practically always overlooked for a couple of reasons. One, most online real estate portals don't even give an option to see failed sales as a search criteria. Whether it's expired, withdrawn, or canceled listings, they won't show up because most of these portals are selling buyer leads, which is you, to the real estate agent. Since buyers don't typically look for these types of properties, it's not a viable lead for them to sell. Also, the agents don't get excited about chasing these types of properties because, well, the next reason we're going to talk about. Number two, properties listed in the MLS, whether coming soon or active, they offer a commission to a cooperating buyer's agent. For properties that failed to sell, there is no guarantee that the seller of the home that is no longer under a contract will pay any commissions at all. As a result, agents get nervous about exposing their buyers to these types of properties. Number three, there are relatively fewer homes that failed to sell on the MLS than there are active and coming soon homes for sale. 
For example, in Orange County, California, where I work, as of this article, there were only 850 homes that had failed to sell between 6 and 12 months ago. By contrast, during the same time period, 9,536 homes actually sold. So it's a lot less homes to choose from. Number four, these types of properties are always perceived as having something wrong with them and this isn't necessarily true. Some of them were just priced wrong or their agent didn't do the right marketing. So what's the advantage of hunting failed sales? Well, something to consider is that homes that have been off the market for an extended period uh, may present opportunities for price negotiations. Sellers who have struggled to sell their homes in the past, they may be more willing to entertain offers below their original asking price or offer incentives such as closing cost assistance or home warranties. Even if they are sticking to their original asking price, the house may be worth more now since time has passed, allowing them to get that price that they wanted and get you a better deal as well compared to other active properties. So if they didn't sell before, why would they sell now? Well, there's lots of potential reasons. Maybe they were just testing the market a year or more ago and it didn't get them the price that they were after. Maybe they had a life event like their family was growing and it wasn't critical that they moved back then, but now with a house full of toys and kids running around, that idea has changed drastically. Maybe it was an owner looking to downsize and at the time, maybe it was just them trying to plan ahead. But if you have approached them now, maybe that downsizing has become a need instead of a want. You never know what their reasons are, but if you don't go find out, you'll never know. Also, there is virtually no competition. Yes, agents are sending mailers and even knocking on these doors on the hunt for a listing, but I can tell you with a fair amount of certainty that there's no buyers taking this approach. So how do you get these failed sales? First, come up with a plan. First thing you have to do is decide if you're going to do this hunt on your own, which you can, or try to enlist the help of an agent. Now remember, most agents won't pursue these types of properties because there's too many uncertainties for them. But we do this kind of hunting all the time for our clients. So if you're looking in Orange County, California, let us know. If you're in another area, we can connect you with an agent that thinks just like us. So do it on your own. If you decide to work with an agent, you can just skip ahead to the next section. Otherwise, do the following. Number one, narrow down your area of interest to just a few cities or even just a few communities. If you go too broad, it will become overwhelming and impossible to view or get to all of those properties. Number two is go ahead and call us to get a list of properties that fail to sell. We'll sell them to you for free and we're not going to obligate you to anything. Number three, go directly to the property and knock on the door. Honestly, this is the best way to make a connection. Don't be weird though. Just let them know that you've been looking in the area and it looks like they were trying to sell in the past and you just wondered if they were still considered selling the home. If so, continue the conversation. Maybe they'll let you take a look then or arrange for a viewing in the next couple of days with your, your significant others or your real estate agent. If you don't want to knock on doors, you can send them a letter letting them know that you're looking to purchase in the neighborhood. Or you could also skip trace the property to get their names and their phone numbers so that you can call them or text them directly. And number four, if you can strike a deal. It's just a matter of putting it into a contract and opening escrow. This is when an agent support is especially important if you don't know what to do. Let's talk about working with an agent. So if you decide you want to have an agent do the above steps for you, and again, we do this all the time, then do the following. Number one, contact your agent of choice and set up a brief meeting. In my opinion, it's always best when it's done in person. Number two, let them know exactly what you're looking for and find out if they're comfortable implementing this strategy among traditional searches. If they are, great. If not, just move on to the next agent. Don't even 
give it a second guess. Number three, let them find the properties that you're looking for. And number four, if you don't get weekly updates, stay on top of them just because they agreed to do it. Remember, there's risks for agents digging up failed sales. But when that agent does find one, they can still negotiate compensation with that seller. And number five, still do searches on your own if you can or go visit property. Remember to keep it fair for everyone. Keep in mind again, if the agent isn't able to get paid on a transaction, it's really unfair to expect them to do the work. So if the seller for some reason isn't willing to offer some form of compensation, be prepared to negotiate something reasonable so the agent is incentivized to house homes. Some additional benefits of taking this approach, well, furthermore, exploring older listings, it allows home buyers like you to gain insights into the local market dynamics and pricing trends. By analyzing historical data, buyers, you can make a more informed decision about the fair market value of a property and determine whether it aligns with the you have. Ultimately, while the allure of coming soon homes for sale may be enticing, the reality of today's real estate market often means that buyers face fierce competition and limited inventory. Instead of wasting time and energy chasing after elusive listings, prospective home buyers would be wise to look backward and explore homes that didn't sell six or more months ago through the MLS. This strategic approach can help buyers avoid bidding wars, negotiate better deals, and find their ideal home in a challenging market.